Welcome to Gamer Use Tips and Tricks for Might and Magic Heroes Online. This video is for players that need help with the final quest arc for Chapter 1 of the Necropolis campaign. It will begin right after you defeat the Jailkeeper boss and return Thusol to this point. Doing so will cause Thusol to activate the Deadeye contraptions in the area. Interacting with an active Deadeyes will create light bridges that will allow you to cross into the Moors of Damnation to continue your quest. The bridges all deactivate immediately after you cross one and you will need to find another dead eyes to restart them. Now there's no worry about getting stuck and the maze is not complicated to get through. In fact, more interesting about this maze is that in it you can find the quest items needed for the side quest for the soul seeker outside the maze. There are four to find total. This one can be found here in the middle-ish area of the maze. And this one is found just at the exit of the maze, near the Apothecary. This one is found in a dead end near the maze. And this one is guarded by the enemy group to the left of the Good Fortune Shrine. Speaking of which, this is the first Good Fortune Shrine you'll find in the game. And these are very useful to have in general. Make the most of them. You can find it by going to the northwest rim point of the maze. One other point of interest is this enemy battle to the right of the exit. If you defeat these enemies, you will finally be able to use the ferry boat near the prison area that has otherwise been locked throughout this whole chapter. This is a very handy shortcut to get to the moors from the prison area. At any rate, when you are ready, you will head up and to the left from the maze, exit into a room where you will fight a two-part boss, which means you must win two battles in a row with no replenishing your troops, or you'll have to start them both all over. In the first battle, hit the strongest vampire stack with a soul mark spell, and then have all your forces dogpile it, to at least weaken if not kill them all off. Vampires are your biggest threat here as they will teleport behind your most vulnerable units and backstab them. However, watch out also for high stack soul deliverers as they have a painful attack that lets them hit two units standing in front of them at once. If you have to, delay at least one of them with torpor while you clear out vampires. Tarek in the back will mostly buff up all the units, but otherwise he's not too much of a, a problem. Once all of those enemies are dead, you will have to start the second and final battle, this time against Tarek's champion whom you must kill to win. He hits pretty hard, but he won't have much backup with him, and even then, you don't have to kill all of them as well. You just need to kill the champion. If you have a ghoul handy, chase down that archer stack and kill it. Otherwise, hit the champion with multiple soul marks and other debuffs while your group piles on the damage. Ghouls will really punish the champion big time here. The lesser decay they will inflict will lop off a decent chunk of HP per round, and if you power up the ghouls with warlord's command, reinforcements, and back them up with support from long-range troops, Tarek's champion will die fast. And once the champion is dead, you'll finally be done with chapter one of the Necropolis campaign. Good job. And that's all for now. Stay tuned to Game Review for more info on Might and Magic Heroes online.